I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Lynn Dai, the CEO of One Of. Lynn, welcome to the show and thank you so much for taking the time to come on. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into the world of NFTs. There's so much to learn about, so many different things going on, and I know that One Of is bringing a really interesting initiative into the cryptocurrency space right now. I would love to kick off our conversation by just hearing a little bit more uh, from you about One Of and what are some of the main solutions that the platform is driving into the industry. Yeah, um, thank you. So OneOf.com is a green NFT platform specifically built for the music vertical. Um, so we work with um, top artists and uh, major partners in the music space and uh, aim to bring NFT, demystify NFT and make affordable NFTs for the everyday fans. Very cool. And from what I've seen and a lot of people have approached me asking about NFTs throughout this year, it seems that the majority of people right now on the surface level understand NFTs as digital artwork or a non-fungible uh, token, but mostly represented through through artwork. And this is an interesting twist because this is a really great use case for artists and for the entertainment industry uh, to do it with music. Can you talk about how you see the current NFT landscape and where one of fits into that as it continues to grow out and, and bring out more mainstream use cases? Yeah, you know, um, NFTs is, is is really, you know, uh, lines of code that creates a digital certificate of authenticity, right? So that can be applied to um, any number of digital items or even physical items. So, so that's what what's super exciting about about the kind of the underlying technology. It, it could fundamentally uh, change uh, how we kind of um, authenticate and and transfer value in many different ways. So, mm -hmm. the earlier use use case and, and the earliest uh, one of the earliest use case that really got me excited was you know two and a half years ago when one of our uh, my mentor and VC, you know, Bill Tai, who's one of the earliest uh, investors in the blockchain space, came to me and was like, "Lynn, you had to take a look at these blockchain cats, right?" So that so, mm. so that was Crypto Kitties, uh, one of the earliest example of gamified NFT experience. We were like, "Wow, like you know that that really kind of set up a lot of thinking how this could be, um, you know, fundamentally be be um, very additive to the music industry and the entertainment industry." Um, so. You know, we start building our projects like almost two started uh, two and a half years ago. Um, you know, this year certainly NFT proliferated really kind of in the art category. Um, so, so art is you know I would say that's like a really kind of easy to understand use case, right? So a piece of art has high value. You know, a piece of physical art has high value from um, you know for for the collectors. And, uh, and and digital art is is kind of just a natural evolution of that, and NFT kind of serves you know uh, surfaces as kind of the perfect digital authenticity, uh, you know, certificate of digital authenticity, um, you know, attached to a, a piece of artwork, digital artwork that was like previously very hard to certify, right? Like you can just like right click and copy a, a, a digital artwork. Um, now music takes that to even uh, the next level. So what? how music is different from art, you know, I think in a couple of ways, uh, music is even more understandable, right? Art, there, there is a, a little bit of a, um, you know, uh, it, it's catered to the high-end consumer, but also price discovery is not that easy. Why is a painting of a bull carrying a Bitcoin worth millions of dollars if it's done by Beeple versus I can draw the same thing, like the same painting by Lin Dai is probably worth like you know four dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so price discovery for the average consumer is not that clear. But music is different. Um, everybody knows, right? And like logically, that John Lennon's Imagine as an NFT is probably worth a lot more than you know the third track on Britney's fourth album, right? No offense to Britney. Um, so, yeah. so I think I think that basically makes it, um, you know, an interesting opportunity to really bring NFT to the masses because everybody already music, right, understands music and music as NFTs. It's not that hard of a leap of, you know, limited edition, let's say, 
uh, limited edition of Nirvana's Nevermind album, mm -hmm. um, right? So, so you already have kind of physical world equivalent of that, which is like you know an autograph vinyl by uh, of Thriller by Michael Jackson is probably um, you know can can work a lot. Um, but NFT is really exciting at the uh, beginning of the artist's career. That's what we're really excited about. Is you know an artist who maybe have her. Uh, his or her first uh, 1,000 fan that's willing to mm -hmm. um, buy a digital collectible from the artist. Um, you know, we all have that experiences like, oh, yeah, I saw that artist play, you know, uh, at this little bar or at my friend's party. You know, now she's he or she is the biggest DJ ever. Um, so but like now you can prove it, right? Like if you were mm -hmm. really the first 500 fans. Um, you, you get to participate in the artist's career in like a brand new way through NFTs. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And thanks for the backstory, Lynn. And I'm curious to dive into that a little bit more, you know, talking about these special occasions. And it's not just taking the album and putting each song as an NFT and or the album as an NFT, although you can do that. I'm curious with one of uh, on the platform, are you doing different initiatives with artists uh, where you're doing special occasions, or are you just buying the tracks? You know, what are uh, what are the limits on on One Up's platform and what you can get as an NFT? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything, right? So you know, I think on uh, some other platform, it's very kind of one dimensional, right? So so there are art platforms that just sell art. Uh, you know, NBA Top Shot is great, right? But but it's very much like you know, it's a it's a trading card um, like platform. So. We do a little bit of everything, you know. I think it's it's so early in the NFT space. Uh, we're doing a lot of experimentation with a lot of success with with our artist partners. For example, you know, like we uh, and what we really think uh, NFT proliferates is when the digital world like connects with the physical world. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're always looking to like you know kind of experiment around around that front. Um, so for example, you know, our first two collections. Uh, Doja Cat, right? So one of the you know the biggest female streaming artists right now. Uh, her collection really is uh, a collection of seven different uh, NFTs that all of them can unlock experiences in the real world. Could be golden tickets to her uh, next tour, uh, or could you know all the way up to the one of one comes with a VIP experience. You know, we'll fly you first class to her next show. Um, you know, we'll we'll do a tour. Uh, of like, you know, living one day in the life of Doja, you can go to a favorite restaurant before you, you go go get the VIP experience at, at the show. So um, so it's, there's, there's a lot of that. Um, and then our first kind of uh, free collection that we did uh, together with iHeart Radio Music Festival mm -hmm. is, you know, iconic festival every year in Vegas. Um, and this is, you know, last year it was, um, you know, because of the pandemic, it was, it was virtual. This year was, you know, kind of first time it came back. Uh, in Vegas, and you know, we we gave away one, we minted one billion free NFTs, which is kind of never been done before on on any blockchain. Uh, in like one night, we did it, and then we <laughs> gave them away to fans. And if you collected right, so there was like twelve different tokens. If you collected the right combination, um, you could win a kind of VIP experience to uh, to to this year's festival. So, which was super mm -hmm. successful. You know, I think what we um, uh, the opposite, right? The future of this, we think, we think the opposite is true. Also, um, where uh, imagine you are actually at the festival, and Doja Cat like start performing, and then in the middle of her song, she blows a kiss to the audience, and everybody raises their phone to to catch, you know, the virtual kiss, right? And then that becomes an NFT, uh, and you have like anybody who. You know, quote unquote, at that moment caught that NFT, uh, and maybe that represents a digital experience. And maybe now that NFT becomes a uh, special item or, or character in uh, the the metaverse or, or some virtual world game. Um, I think both are interesting. Where um, the when the line is blurred between physical and digital, that's when you know I think true fans get to enjoy the utility of the NFT uh, mm -hmm. more than just kind of the physical NFT itself or, or the, you know, the, the digital representation of the NFT, which is, you know, an image or, or a song or a media file. Yeah, it's super fascinating, Lynn, and I completely agree because I've talked to a lot of people that are getting into NFTs and they're trying to understand 
you know, from the artwork perspective, you know, how is this digital art on my computer? You know, if I don't have like a painting in my house or how can I really enjoy it if I'm just looking at it on the screen? But to incorporate all these different VIP experiences and actual, you know, physical things that you can do uh, with proving the ownership of the NFT, I think is going to be next level. And it's really exciting to hear about that the drop in the giveaway that you did with iHeart, that's a huge brand. And to be able to collect things like that early on, I think is super exciting for fans. And I saw on the one of platform that you're doing NFT drops, like often uh, people can just go and, and buy different NFTs there, but there's also sort of drops and things like that. Maybe you could talk about that and how often your team is doing that. And will there be more of the same moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're planning about 200 collections in the first 12 months. Um, and each collection comes with, you know, kind of one or more drops and, you know, and usually kind of three drops is, is what we're doing now, right? So each week uh, there could be uh, one or more artists being featured on, on our platform. Um, so, you know, I think the biggest barrier to entry still is, um, is both uh, the price and in the uh, difficulty for the average consumer or average fan to get involved in the NFT space. So, so we broke down both of those barriers, right? So yeah. um, minting an NFT on other platforms, uh, minting is, is the word for creating an NFT. Um, you know, the cost of creating an NFT is, is as high as like five, six, seven hundred dollars, right? Because mm -hmm. the limitation cool. of proof of work uh, blockchain. So, so we broke that down on um, and and through our platform, which is built on Tezos, which is environmentally mm -hmm. friendly, two million times more energy efficient, but as well as super low transaction costs. So, so through our minting methods, it's it's effectively about two cents to mint an NFT, uh, and we subsid wow. subsidize that cost for our artist partners. Right, we partner with the biggest artists in the world, including mm -hmm. you know such as Doja Cat and. And iHeart, so we can afford to actually, you know, now we can actually allow the artists to have a full canvas to create whatever mm -hmm. artwork without having to charge their fans an arm and a leg. You know, the entire iHeart collection is free. Um, it's it's just not possible on any other platforms. Mm -hmm. um, right, we were able to subsidize the cost on a million NFT because uh, you know our technology uh, allows the NFT to be minted and you know affordable way to consumers. So, so the second kind of challenge barrier to entry for everyday fans is it's just too complicated. Um, you know, you have to be a, a a really you know a crypto nerd like me on most other platform to be able to learn like how to set up a wallet, how to custody your own keys, um, and then if you like don't do it right, like you lose all your like crypto assets, and you know it's 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 kind of uh, it's very challenging for the everyday fan. I mean, we basically built a platform one up.com is built for the everyday fan so you don't have to understand crypto uh you don't have to know how to open your own wallet you basically sign up with your email and phone number um and you can get to buy your first nft for five dollars in under uh hmm. three minutes with a credit card right so wow. so you know what we're looking to do is just really uh you know through a through the fun use case of music and actually collecting something from your favorite artists on board kind of the next 100 million non-crypto native mm -hmm. uh, fans. So I think that's a big difference between kind of uh, who we're, the community we're trying to serve uh, and educate uh, versus, you know, I think a lot of platforms are built to target um, like the crypto whales. Um, you know, we, we have full crypto payment capabilities. You can, you can pay with Tezos, you can pay with ETH. Uh, and, and get your NFTs. Uh, we're a very inclusive platform, but you know I think um, the secret sauce here is we do make it easy, uh, and, you know, and, and, and you know for the kind of the, the next um, tens of millions or a hundred million mm -hmm. users to to be onboarded into the blockchain space. Definitely, I think that's a great uh, breakdown of the barriers to entry, especially when I didn't know that it would cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, to, to produce an NFT. To move that down to two cents is astronomically better. Um, so that's super great to hear uh, with the OneOf platform. And to have it on the Tezos, uh, I actually haven't heard of that uh, with NFTs, but it sounds like your team's really worked it out where you can purchase with a credit card, make it really easy. It's interesting to see people that aren't involved in cryptocurrency get involved 
in it through NFTs, through something like one of, and I think that's going to be just another door opening to help uh, show Web 3.0 to the rest of the world. And I'm curious, Lynn, you know, you, you're already working with some of the biggest artists. Can you give a glimpse into the future and what you think uh, the popularity of music based NFTs will be in two years from now or three years from now? And, you know, will every artist be using these? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think this is a fundamentally, you know, kind of the fourth pillar of a artist uh, revenue stream uh, that never that, that didn't exist before and, and is now kind of uh, potentially is uh, is as meaningful, if not more meaningful than the other three pillars. Right. So mm -hmm. um, this is, you know, if you imagine an artist's career, usually it's uh, it consists of like, you know, music revenue or, or streaming revenue. Um, but artists often have to collateralize that by signing a record deal, right? So mm -hmm. I go through a, a major label. Uh, the second revenue stream, uh, touring revenue, right? But the artists usually have to sign a, you, you know, like a ticketing or, or touring um, deal uh, with a, you know, a platform like or, or a company like Light Nation. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's collateralized. Um, and then, you know, songwriting revenue, uh, artists usually have to sign a, a publishing deal. So, so this is, um, you know, NFTs is kind of a direct way for the artists to connect with their biggest fans and community and monetize directly, really without um, kind of uh, uh, collateralizing their, their, their revenue potential with a third party, right? So, I mean, we're just a platform where, where the, the artists interact with their fans, um, you, you know, so, so it's, it's really truly kind of something that is very liberating. And this is the first time also, you know, the fans get to also, it's a two-way street, right? The fans get to participate in an artist's career. Mm -hmm. Imagine you collected, you know, the rookie card of some artist that you, you, you saw, you know, at some small bar in, in, in the suburbs. And then like three years later, that artist went on to, to, to become win a Grammy. Right. So, so you get to, if you hold like that artist first NFT, um, you, you get to participate in the artist career, uh, in a brand new way. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, we partnered with, um, Quincy Jones, right? So Quincy is, um, is, you know, it backed our company and, and he's certainly, you know, one of the most legendary, uh, figures in, in music. And, and he's, you know, most people don't know this. He, he is a uh, very tech forward. He's the, one of the first, uh, investors in uh, Spotify, right? Mm -hmm. When there, whenever there is a, 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 a tech, new technology that that is fundamentally beneficial to the artist, he he's usually one of the first one to to adopt it. So uh, working with Quincy and Quincy's team, um, you know, um, Quincy's uh, president of Quincy Jones Productions, Adam Fell is uh, is my partner in, in the project. Uh, we are, you know, just what we have planned, um, you know, I hinted that we, we have about 200 collections from um, major and emerging artists planned for uh, for just the first 12 months um, of, of, of the company. Um, and, and each collection is designed a little differently, right? So, so there are experiences involved. They are, you know, we have a collection that just went live. Um, uh today with the game um the rapper mm -hmm. right so yeah. uh you know that collection is kind of a combination of music plus uh kind of a little bit of the trading card um you know um mechanism so you can now collect uh buy a pack um and and get like collect any of like 12 different unique um nft cards from the game and mm -hmm. some cars comes with an unreleased track. Some some car comes with an unreleased music video. Um, mm -hmm. So so it's really fun. And then you know you get to trade that with other fans, right? So so now we're combining um, kind of a gamification with um, actual uh, unreleased music. So artists mm -hmm. like the game is is, is really pioneering um, kind of like how to actually release new music through this new medium, which is very, very exciting. I mean, you can't get this song on normal streaming platforms, right? Mm -hmm. You can't get this music video on YouTube. So his true fans like get to, you know, now collect something that uh, truly nobody else have, right? So. Very, very cool, Lin. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to checking out the platform to see these future drops and see which artists are the ones that start developing this kind of 
connection to their fans through NFTs. So I think it sounds very promising moving forward for the viewers that are looking to also follow along with the updates on one of and get a hold of some of these NFTs that are currently on the platform and, and for the upcoming NFT drops, what's the best way for them to get involved in the platform? Yeah, you can follow us on social media, uh, on Instagram and, and Twitter um, at one of NFT. Um, so all spelled out um, in or you can just go check out the website directly uh, one of dot com. Uh, we have you know, like I said, drops uh, almost every other day um, and, and multiple uh, artists uh, going live. Uh, so, so you know, right now on the site, there's the game collection is, is live. And then uh, we have a, a, a free collection with uh, a free NFT that we're releasing also later today with Alesso on the major EDM mm -hmm. DJ uh, that leads to that tease into his full collection uh, later in the month. Uh, so it's all very exciting. Uh, the only thing I, I would say is usually these collection gets uh, sold out or free mm -hmm. NFT gets claimed uh, within minutes. So you mm -hmm. have to like stay on top and follow our social mm -hmm. and know when the drop happens and you know, just like, um, be there, we make it super affordable. <laughs> so you know, um, you know, you could get a get a great NFT for, for as little as $5 these days. So amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. Uh, I will leave those links to the community and the website as well in the description box below. All the best with all of the artists that uh, your team is working with moving forward and overall on the one-off platform. And let's follow up in the near future. Yep, thank you.